Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about feature scaling. So feature scaling is one of the uh, important questions asked uh, during machine learning interview. So today we will be discussing about that and also we will understand when to use feature scaling and what are the different techniques uh, available to uh, perform the feature scaling. So let us start. So under feature scaling, uh, we will study what is normalization and what is standardization. Basically there are more techniques but uh, these are the two uh, uh, mostly used techniques in machine learning. Okay? And we will see uh, when to use which scaling technique. Uh, mainly when to use normalization and when to use standardization and then also we will see like uh, what are the algorithms ml algorithm which are sensitive to uh, feature scaling okay so these three points mainly we are going to discuss so what is feature scaling so uh, when uh, performing machine learning task you might have observed like uh, when you have different features in your data set okay so they differ in terms of their magnitude they differ in terms of their unit right like uh, some uh, features are in kilograms some units are in uh, grams and liters milliliters age in years and salary maybe in thousands right so that's where uh, based on their units their uh, value also differ so like if you see in this uh, table basically so here we have uh, age and salary of different employees right so age ranges in between uh, two digit numbers and salary ranges in between five digit numbers right so what happens when you uh, build a model so what model do basically sometimes it gives more weightage to salary column because their values are huge okay and then uh, it is uh, they start dominating so model becomes biased towards salary it gives more weightage to salary column than age column but in real life this could not be the case right so that's where like uh, if you observe this kind of scenario in your data set then it's good to scale the feature so that we bring all those features in uh, one particular scale okay so that's where uh, we use feature scaling so feature scaling is nothing but the idea to bring uh, your features uh, within a same range so that uh, your model uh, gives equal weighted uh, to all the features okay so that's the idea behind this feature scaling okay so now let's understand uh, like uh, how we do feature scaling and uh, what are the different techniques okay so before we move towards that uh, so let's understand one more thing okay so in machine learning like uh, uh, we need to uh, like uh, identify like there is a correlation right so which features are correlated to each other so we calculate correlation coefficient similar similarly if you want to identify if the if two features are similar to each other then there are some certain distance measures okay so in machine learning there are some algorithm which work uh, based on distance measures okay so distance uh, uh, tells you the how your two features are similar to each other okay so if there are so, so the algorithm which uh, which work on distance measures they are mostly affected by the uh, like high range of features right so let's understand what is distance measure so like uh, one of the distance measure is like euclidean distance so here in this video i'm not going to explain all the distance measure i just included euclidean distance just to give you an idea how uh, like uh, features are affected uh, like how distance is calculated for different features basically okay so like uh, if there are two points x1 and x2 and they have coordinates like x1 has a1 b1 and x2 is a2 b2 then distance between x1 and x2 can be calculated by this formula like square root of a2 minus a1 whole square plus b2 minus b1 whole square so this is a simple formula we study in our college days okay so not going much in detail about that one similarly if you have like a multi-dimensional feature space like three dimensional then distance can be calculated by this formula okay so this you can uh, pause the video and read about this okay now uh, with that like uh, if two so if you want to uh, like uh, calculate the similarity between two features then if distance between two features is very low very small distance then these features are similar to each other if distance is much bigger then features are not similar to each other that, that's the basic idea basically okay so now with this basic idea now again recall the feature scaling okay so the features which have higher range right so if you calculate the distances for higher range feature then distance anyway will be bigger and if distance is bigger then uh, you will say okay these feature not not similar right but that uh, the reason behind bigger distance is just because they have higher range right so that's where the algorithm which use distance measure for similarity identification those are affected by feature scaling and that's why we need to do the feature scaling okay so let's uh, calculate the distance uh, for employee 1, 2, 3 for example, okay. 
So, uh, without uh, doing any feature scaling, I'm just calculating the distance between employee 2 and employee 1. Okay. And if you apply the same formula, the distance will come as 31.06. And similarly, distance between employee 2 and employee 3, it comes around 6.70. Okay. So, like um, if you want to calculate between employee 1 and 2, then these are a1, b1, like x coordinate, and these are y coordinate, like b1, b2. Okay. So, 27 minus 44 whole square plus 47,000 minus 73 whole square and total square root. That's how we get 31. Okay. So now you see here the distance between employee 2 and employee 1 is much bigger 31.06 than the distance between employee 2 and employee 3. So based on this, you can say, okay, employee 2 and employee 3 are much similar than employee 2 and employee 1. Okay. But see here, this 31, this is like more impacted because this like higher range values, right? 47,000 and 73,000. Even if like we have like in, these are in thousands, right? If we have in millions, right? So like in lakhs or millions, 10 lakhs, okay? Then this value could be much more than 31, right? So see here, so, so this like higher range is directly impacting this final value. Right. So if uh, these values are bigger or higher, then this uh, final value will be bigger and then it will uh, directly tell you, okay, employee 2 and employee 1 are not similar, but that is not the case, right? So that's where we need to scale the, uh, these values in one range to uh, determine the similarity measures. Okay. So this is uh, all about uh, why we need feature scaling basically. Now the next question is like how to do the feature scaling. So for that we have two different methods. So one is normalization and another one is like uh, standardization. Okay. So let's, let's study what is normalization and what is standardization. So what is normalization? So normalization in machine learning also known as min-max normalization or min-max scaling. Okay. And once you normalize the values, then all range, they, all values ranges between 0 to 1. We'll see how to do this. Okay. So the formula to uh, normalize the values is like x norm is equal to x minus min, min value of x divided by max minus min. Okay. So that's how we calculate the uh, normalized value. So how we do? Okay. So suppose here like uh, age column we want to normalize. So how we will do? So in uh, this age column, what is the minimum value? So that is uh, 27. Okay. And what is the max value? That is 48. Okay. So how you do? How we calculated this 0 0.8? We calculated 44 minus min that is 27 divided by uh, max that is 48 minus 27. And if you solve that one, it will give it 0 0.80. Similarly for 30, so like 30 minus 27 divided by 48 minus min that is 27. That's how you will get 0 0.14. Okay. And you do for all the values. You see here, like for minimum, it will come as 0 and for max value, it will come as 1. So that's where all values will range between 0 to 1. Okay. So now we scale this age column. Okay. So with the help of normalization, normalized values. Okay. Similarly, we can scale our uh, salary column and it will come like this. So here also range, you see, we have all values within the range of 0 to 1. Fine. And now let's again calculate the distances after normalization. Okay. So now we calculated like uh, employee 2 and employee 1. So here you see like doesn't matter like the, their salary values, they are in millions uh, or even more than that or in thousands or in hundreds, doesn't matter, right? But after normalization, they will all fall in between 0 to 1. So that's where now, so we have normalized those values. So now the outcome of the similarity that Euclidean distance, this is much more significant than the before normalization. Okay, so now uh, because we have normalized these values, now uh, you can say, okay, uh, whether these employee 2 and employee 1 are similar to each other, okay, and uh, uh, what is the similarity measure, okay, so this is 1.15, okay, so this is more significant basically. Now let's understand what is standardization, another uh, technique for uh, feature scaling, okay. So what is standardization? Standardization is another technique for feature scaling. We'll talk about like when to use which one, but first understand what is standardization. So standardization is also known as Z-score normalization. In standardization, features are scaled to have zero mean and one standard deviation. Okay. It means after standardization, features will have mean value is equal to zero and standard deviation is equal to one. In normalization, we see after normalization, all values will uh, range in between 0 to 1. But here it is not the case. Here, after standardization, um, your uh, mean value will be 0 and standard deviation will be 1. Okay. So, all values will lie, will vary around the mean with maximum one standard deviation. Okay. 
and what is the formula so here the formula is like x and that data item value x minus mean of all the values in x divided by standard deviation of x okay and this is also known as z score so this uh, is also known like the formula for z score or standard score so that's where we uh, know uh, know it as z score normalization as well okay so let's understand so now again we have age column and salary column and we'll uh, standardize those values okay so first of all uh, for that we need to calculate what is the mean of uh, this age and what is the standard deviation of this age okay so a mean you can simply calculate like you just uh, add all these values and divide by how many total values are there one two three four five six seven okay so add all those values divide by seven so that's how you'll get the mean value okay and what is the standard deviation how you calculate the standard deviation the standard deviation is nothing but the square root of variance and how you calculate the variance that is the summation of square, uh, square root of x minus uh, mu whole uh, whole square divided by uh, n okay so that is the formula of uh, standard deviation but uh, that uh, i am assuming you know how to calculate mean and standard deviation okay and once you calculate that one then how to calculate the standardized score so how you calculate for so 44 minus mean value divided by standard deviation value and if you solve that one it will give you this value okay and likewise you calculate all these values okay but anyway in machine learning you need no need to calculate those values manually so in scikit learn we have like min man is min max scalar as, as well as standardized scalar okay so this you directly have a function exposed there and you just directly do the fit transform and it will give you all those standardized value there okay but you should know like what is happening behind the scene basically okay so now once you have a standardized value and now if you just uh, uh, add all those value and divide by 7 you will get the mean value is equal to 0 and if you again calculate the standard um, deviation for all these value it will come to 1 okay so you can use the formula for standard deviation and you calculate it will come to 1 and similarly for salary column okay so now let's understand like let's again calculate what is the like a distance between employee 2 and 1 and then distance between employee 2 and 3 so like employee 2 is more uh, similar to employee 1 or employee 2 is more similar to employee 3 okay let's understand after standardization now we are calculating like this okay so this is also neglecting the effect of higher range values right so all the values will lie like uh, the base value that is the mean is 0 and uh, standard deviation is 1 okay so they will uh, lie uh, like uh, above or uh, below the mean value with max uh, standard deviation of 1 okay and now you apply the same formula uh, okay and then you will get the distance between employee 2 and employee 1 as 3.47 and distance between employee 2 and employee 3 that is 0 0.71 okay so obviously uh, like uh, employee 2 and employee 3 are more similar compared to employee 2 and employee 1 okay but after st standardization your like um, uh, higher range values effect will be uh, neglected okay otherwise like you keep on increasing the salary value this uh, will keep on increasing but now after standardization doesn't matter if you increase the salary score okay salary values uh, final outcome will be similar to this around uh, 3 point something okay around 3 okay so that is all about standardization okay so now uh, the next uh, question comes okay so when to use uh, like which one okay normalization or standardization okay what is the difference so what are the specific specific cases when you go for normalization and what are the specific cases when you go for standardization okay so let's understand that as well so if you have outliers in your features in columns okay then normalizing your data will scale most of the data to a small interval that is a 0 to 1 okay which means all features will have the same scale and hence it will not handle outlier well so that is the what is the outcome of these lines it is telling if you have outliers in your data set then uh, don't go for normalization then go for standardization another is like standardization is more robust to outlier as we have already seen and in many cases it is preferable over maximum normalization okay norm again an another point normalization is good to use when your data does not follow a normal dis distribution okay this can be useful in algorithm that do not assume any distribution of the data like k nearest neighbor that is k n algorithm or neural networks okay so these are the two algorithm which does not assume any um, pr uh, any kind of distribution in data set okay so like uh, uh, linear regression these kind of algorithm assume okay your data should be normally distributed okay so that's where k n or neural networks doesn't assume anything okay like that so that's where you can use normalization okay Standardization on the other hand can be helpful in cases where the data follows a normal distribution. However, this does not have to be necessarily true. 
also unlike normalization standardization does not have a bounding ranges as you have already seen normalization has the range of 0 to 1 and we don't have any range for standardization and of course the mean value of a standardized value will be 0 and standard deviation will be 1 so even if you have outliers in your data they will not be affected by standardization okay so outlier will be well uh, treated by standardized values okay but not with normalized values okay now another uh, so till here we studied okay what is feature scaling and what are the techniques to do feature scaling and which kind of situation you go for normalization and standardization okay this we understood now another question arises on top of that okay when interviewer will start like confusing you okay then they will ask you like okay uh, you know what is feature scaling but can you tell me like when to do feature scaling uh, at what step in machine learning process we do feature scaling like uh, before splitting the train test and or, or after splitting in train test okay so that's where i have written all the points here you can read out so basically um, feature scaling is preferred or uh, is to be done after train test split okay so you split the data in your train test then you do scaling in train okay learn the trend behavior okay like uh, how you train like how you scale in train data you uh, record the uh, mean or variance okay and then you take those mean or variance and then scale your test data okay so that's where like in if you do this in scikit learn then uh, when we do the fit and transform okay so you fit on training data and then you transform the tra train data as well as test data okay separately so then uh, feature scaling will be effective if what if you do the feature scaling in complete data and then you split in test train test so what happens uh, there could there could be the case of data leakage what is data leakage see if you have not splitted the data okay and you are doing the scaling okay and after that you are is, is splitting so what happens in train data itself um, train data itself have information about your test data and when you are training the model on train data it will have information about your test data so what will happen when you are testing on test data it will perform good but when you are going to test it on like unseen data then uh, the performance is not guaranteed because uh, while training it has learned the behavior of test data as well that that's the reason it has performed on testing data well but in unseen data it couldn't perform okay so that is the problem we known as data leakage okay the information is leaked in advance okay so that's where i have written like preferred way like split the data perform scaling on training data build model on training data and then use the scaling parameter that is the mean and variance uh, from the training set to scale the testing data separately and then test on testing data so this is the preferred uh, approach okay next is like ml algorithm which uh, need feature scaling so like I have uh, like uh, mentioned the algorithm as well as their corresponding points, the reason behind using that one, okay. So in K-means algorithm, uh, uh, we use feature scaling because they use the distance measure. So keep in mind all the algorithm which use a distance measure uh, in some of the stages, so those are, uh, those need uh, require feature scaling, okay. Similarly, K-nearest neighbors also use uh, distance measure, okay. So that's where we need feature scaling. Principal component analysis also, uh, we need uh, feature scaling artificial uh, neural network they uh, use gradient descent as uh, okay uh, methodolo methodology to learn the learning rate and all those things okay so learning rate is dependent on the feature uh, value okay so uh, you learn gradient descent separately okay i will cover in another video okay but uh, we have something called learning rate and all those things so those are dependent on the feature values okay so that's where like if we have a higher feature values then it will be affected so that's where in gradient descent kind of algorithm also we need feature scaling okay and now what are the algorithm which doesn't uh, need feature to be scaled so like if algorithm is not distance based feature scaling is not important okay including nerve based linear discriminant analysis and tree based algorithm like gradient boosting random forest these are the algorithm algorithm which doesn't need feature scaling Okay, so that's all about feature scaling. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if yes, then please uh, do subscribe and like and share with the ML community. So thank you. Thank you for watching.